Damas y caballeros, feliz Cinco de Mayo y bienvenido a Today on the Spot. It's today, we're on the spot, we're live, and I'm your host, Chris Waters. Joined here, kicking it off with a live demo, it's Joel Wade, executive producer from EA. Joel, welcome to the set. Super excited to be here, thanks for having me. And we're, Cinco de Mayo. Ex we're excited to have you on Cinco de Mayo to show yes. off Shadows of the Damned. Right. Uh, what are we, can, give us, set it up for us while we launch into it. Give us, you know, I think a lot of people are curious about this title, and uh, we, we want to see it. Well, there's a lot to be curious about, frankly. I mean, this title, this is some of the craziest shit I've ever seen in a video game. And I've, I've worked on a lot of video games. You've, yeah, you've been, been around video games a long time, and this is something special? This is something special. This, right. this is something uh, that most people will have never seen, but we wanted to give a little love, a little amore, if you will. Excellent. To, yeah, the, <laughs> the, the game spot, uh, the on spot live audience. Fantastic. You know? And, you know, we love to see it. Well, They're we're going to jump excited. in. We're going to look at the very beginning of the game. So this is the, the tutorial mission. Okay. Uh, and so just, just a taste of the mechanics, mm -hmm. um, just a little bit of setup on the main characters and, and the story. And then um, the, the, the madness thing about this game is that it just gets crazier and crazier and more fun and more funny as you go. So keep that in mind throughout this demo, folks, that if you think what you're seeing is crazy, it only yeah. gets crazier. You ain't seen nothing yet. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. All right. So we. We open on a gloomy street in uh, some back alley. That's right, and there's our hero, Garcia Hotspur, professional demon hunter. Now, what we did with this game, we work with the Grasshopper Manufacturer in Tokyo. Big props to them for actually getting this game done after the tsunami, the nuclear scare, everything that they hit them. Yeah. But, but they got the game out. We are just about to go gold. Um, and we got what we call, you know, it's our dream team, we call them the Nightmare Team. The Suda51, <laughs> the craziest mad scientist game developer in history. That's an accurate description. Shinji Mikami, one of the most, you know, polished, tight, mechanics-focused guys in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, Resident Evil, of course, Devil May Cry. And then uh, Yamoka-san, who is one of the most uh, celebrated composers in the business. That, so that's the Nightmare Team. Right. So they got together. Um, and what they really wanted to do is create a title that is um, punk, so a little edgy, a little different than so your normal polished stuff. Okay. But also really inspired by Grindhouse, by Tarantino and Rodriguez, and something that really uh, maybe sort of doesn't quite take itself completely seriously all the time. Yep. I like that. It's sort of that grimy, I mean, the dude, he's got tattoos all over him, Gar Garcia does. And look at this character. I mean... He's got, what, a goat head? He's wearing, like, chainmail underwear? Well, one of the crazy things, I mean, so so, so the premise of the story, I mean, it, it's not it's not a, a crazy premise in that you've got a guy, well, he's a professional demon hunter, and he's okay. out here killing demons. Yeah, just trying um, to make a, di make a living. But ultimately, it's, it's about guy meets girl, girl gets stolen by the devil to hell, guy must rescue girl. Um, ah, that age-old classic. But this is no <laughs> hell like you've ever seen it before, and that's where the beauty of Suda51 comes in. Mm -hmm. One of the most creative guys in the industry, right? No More Heroes, Killer7. He thinks of stuff that you just, it just blows your mind. Really striking visions that, yeah, it's the, his artistic style is so yeah. distinct and so creative. Yes, it's inspiring and scary at the same time. <laughs> and funny, which is part of the, the, the true charm of this game. Mm-hmm. So what we're looking at now is um, sort of what uh, Mikami sort of brings to, to the title. is, And we're teaching you the beginning of the mechanics. Any fan of Resident Evil is going to instantly feel very comfortable with this game. And here what we're seeing is, unfortunately, um, Garcia's come home. Uh, he's, he's kicked some demon's ass. And uh, there's, there's, there's a problem. Oh, yeah. That's, that's not what you want to come home to. No, and this, so this is the, the girl you mentioned earlier? This is Paula, yes, that's right. And uh, Suda51 doesn't like to waste any time. Oh Let's my Let's have goodness. a demon bust out of your girlfriend while she's hanging from the ceiling. I was just thinking this scene could use a little levity. And what Good lord! And this is just how the game starts. <laughs> this is what I'm trying to tell you. Uh -huh. so this is the first 10 minutes of the game, so we start you real slow. We're teaching you the mechanics. Yep, and you got course, that familiar over-the-shoulder laser targeting. That's yeah, right. Resident Evil. Like I said, anyone who, who loves Resident Evil is going to love this game. Mm -hmm. But we kicked it up a notch, so it's much faster paced. Not only can you shoot and run and gun while on the move, unlike the sort of the Resident Evil Key. stuff, so much faster. Yeah. We've upped the arsenal, so much bigger upgrade of weapons and the weapon classes you're able to use. Mm -hmm. And you're not using, I mean, 
you can look at this pistol, one look tells you this isn't like, you know, a STARS standard issue sidearm. That's right. And this is the weakest gun in the entire game. Um, you only have one game of one gun available to you right now in the tutorial sequences. They're teaching you basically Ooh, how to move, how to get nice crazy shots. badass headshots, how to stomp people <laughs> to death. Um, but there's a massive upgrade system with three classes of weapons and a torch, which you actually use as a melee. Sorry, three classes of firearms, mm -hmm. a melee weapon, mm -hmm. and a massive upgrade system. So uh, one of the things that Mikami. Uh, Dear, near and dear to his heart is a vendor who can give, sell you micro upgrades. Yes. What that, are you buying? Yeah, yes, exactly. <laughs> so we brought that back. But there's also a uh, Ooh, more demon jump. Yeah, more of a macro upgrade where the weapons actually change dramatically in their functionality. Okay. So you'll see this is the boner. This is the it fires bones. This is your standard firearm. Of course. But it upgrades into at one point the big boner, which mm -hmm. uh, you have to see to believe. I <laughs> Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. And so the ammunition for that changes as well. Well, or bone bone is you know bone is your, your ammunition for the boner, but you also have the teether, which is your automatic weapon, which fires which fires teeth. teeth right. That's fantastic. You have the mono cushioner, which actually fires skulls. It's more of a heavy sort of shotgun weapon. <laughs> um, but you know, at one point, it'll actually change so it fires four projectiles at once, uh, heat seeking projectiles. I mean. It, they really had a lot of fun with the weapons. So I take it from the sound of this arsenal that you're not just going to be shooting shambling little demons the whole time. That's right. And in fact, speaking of not just little demons, we have the world exclusive reveal of our villain. Look at that guy. This is wow. Fleming, a.k.a. Lord of the Demons. He's like a triple-decker demon. He's, he's kind of a badass. And frankly, he is thoroughly pissed at you. At at Garcia. Garcia has been laying waste to his minions on Earth, oh, as, as professional demon hunters, or good ones, sure. are known to do. Yeah. Um, so he goes after Garcia where it hurts. Mm -hmm. He takes the love of his life, Paula, and he's actually going to take her back to hell. Where the other thing that Suda and uh, Mikami are famous for are their epic boss battles, right? Yes. So add the, the, the epic size and grandeur of a Mikami boss battle, the creativity of a Suda boss battle, and I think uh, they're... And you got a reason why you call them the Nightmare Team. We do have a reason <laughs> right why we call them the Nightmare there. Team. That, gonna, I people mean, are in for a treat. The mind reels at what kind of thing those guys could come up with when you're seeing, you know, this kind of craziness in the first few minutes of the game. That's right. Uh, so big bosses you're going to be encountering when you head into hell. That's right. As well as, you know, hordes of you know, multifarious demons, it would seem. Uh, this, is a, this is a lengthy adventure you guys are gearing up It is for? a lengthy adventure. So the average player is probably going to spend about 15 hours. We know that because we have a lot of people play it. Okay. Um, one of the things you're not seeing here because of the tutorial, though, is that this is really a thinking man shooter in that, um, and you can see looking back at some of the other footage we released, light and dark are the real theme of this game. Mm -hmm. Kind of like Alan Wake, but we like to think better. Okay. Um, where you really have to pay attention to, am I in light, am I in darkness? Uh, light is, um, does damage to demons, um, and darkness, actually, when you're in hell, um, is lethal to you. And so you're constantly seeing, trying to see, take advantage of, am I making the most of light and dark in combat, and taking mm -hmm. advantage of that, and in puzzles, and sometimes both at the same time. Now, is that something, you know, is that light-dark mechanic, is that dictated uh, by the environment or, you know, by an item you have? You know, what kind of control are you having over, over that element? Uh, there's all kinds of ways that you, I mean, just a, a huge variety of ways that you'll manipulate it once you're in hell. I mean, okay. everything from uh, goat heads that actually eat darkness and can produce light uh, there's a special light shot mode on your gun that you can use to set things on fire. There's mm -hmm. fireworks dispensers that set temporary light. There's creatures that have their own light source, much like sort of anglerfish in our world, but add Suda and, and <laughs> you go and sprinkle some hell on them. And That's right. <laughs> so now you folks have been keeping track here. Hopefully, been reading these uh, these subtitles because, as you're saying, you know. It's not a game that's taken itself too seriously. You know, there's, there's a good amount of humor in here. The dialogue is truly a thing of beauty. Um, you have to remember that it's very tongue in cheek mm -hmm. and um, you know, jump in and, and you're in for a hell of a ride. So there's one more character here that's, that's critical that um, we need to introduce to you and that's Johnson. So Johnson is a flaming floating skull. 
on the surface, mm -hmm. sure, but what he really is, is he's a shape-shifting demon. Okay. So, the beauty of this is that Johnson is your friend. You've actually won him in a previous battle with another demon, okay. taken him for your own, because he is not only, uh, well, he's your friend, but he's your guide through hell because he's lived there. Okay, he knows the ropes. But he changes shape. So you'll see right now, he's actually gonna transform into the melee weapon. He also transforms into each of your firearms. Really? So That's handy. Yeah, he's your friend, he's your guide, and he's actually your weapon And he's your weapon arsenal. <laughs> that's right. And you'll be upgrading him as you go along. Yes, that's right. Cool, uh, we got a question coming in from the chat room. Squall wants to know, in terms of the structure of the game, uh, you know, you mentioned obviously Devil May Cry, Resident Evil. Does it tend one tor towards one or the other? You know, the sort of more at, at straightforward adventure of Resident Evil versus a more mission-based Devil May Cry? Uh, I think we're gonna go closer to the Resident Evil camp okay. in this one. And so no, you know, like letter grades at the end of different sections, do you have sort of any kind of scoring system like that? Uh, no, but it's much more about, um, what they really wanted to focus on was building that relationship between Johnson and Garcia. So Garcia is the badass demon hunter. Yep. Johnson uh, is your uh, your counter, he's mm -hmm. your buddy. And in fact, it's, you know, the one way of looking at this game is that it's you, your Johnson, on the craziest road trip through hell you can possibly imagine. <laughs> Sounds like like a great setup for a buddy comedy slash horror grind, grindhouse flick. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Now, this is an awesome motorcycle that, I, do you get to drive the awesome motorcycle at all? Oh. Well, we all know that motorcycles are the preferred mode of transport when you're trying to get to hell. Mm -hmm. But uh, sadly, but when, once you're when, there, when you get to hell, it's really about the firepower. You really got to park out front. They don't and the like, light and dark puzzles. Yes. They don't like, you know, those vehicles coming into hell. No, they, that's right. You got to park it at the door. All right, very cool. Now, have we wrapped up the demo? Have we sh have you shown people the Shadows of the Dam and got piqued their we interest? We have. It's just a little taste. Uh, it's just the first few minutes of the game. A lot of setup there, but we wanted to, you know, give your give your audience a little bit of love. Well, and, they've been uh, loving it. If there's, you know, if the chat room's any indication, folks are definitely intrigued by this game. Fantastic. And, uh, there's a bunch of laughing going on in there, too. I'm going to have to go back and read the subtitles myself. Yeah. Joel, thanks so much for bringing this by, showing it off to us, giving us a taste of Shadows of the Damned. When can, when can we get this in our hands? When, when is this game coming out? Yeah, despite a tsunami and an earthquake and radiation damage, this hits the shelves June 21st. June 21st for the? Uh, PS3 and 360. Fantastic. Joel, thank you so much for coming on the My show. My pleasure. Looking forward to seeing more of Shadows of the Damned as the months go along.